All right, lesson three of unit one, geometry. We're going to be talking about the midpoint formula. We're going to pretty much just jump right in with some examples. That's going to be a trend often, well, probably less in geometry, actually, because it's much more concept and vocabulary heavy. Um, and actually, this point, actually, I'd set all that spiel for nothing because... Case in point, we're actually going to do a concept first because the first thing that you need to do new before you can solve these problems is the what is the midpoint formula? The midpoint formula is super duper simple. It's actually even easier, in my opinion, than it's easier to memorize than the distance formula. The distance formula has got that big old square root and the squares and all these other all these other crazy things. The midpoint formula, formula is really simple. I'm going to write it out. It's going to look kind of scary-ish, but it's not. And I'll explain why after I get it all written out. <coughs> Excuse me. So you notice I put a big old parentheses. That's because the midpoint formula... We're finding a mid point and we, we label points with ordered pairs X, Y, right? And so there's no difference here. So to find a midpoint between any two points, we take X1 and add it to X2. And then we divide that by two. And then for the Y part, look like some weird banana or something. Just some big comma, That's that'll work. <laughs> for the Y part, you can probably guess at this point, we take y1 and add it to y2, and we divide that by two. Now, that looks a little wild, right? You may have already spotted what's going on here. Basically, all we're doing is we're trying, for the x part, we find the average of the x's, because to find average, you add them up and divide by how many. So we add these two numbers up and divide by two, and to find the y's, the, for the y part, we take the average of the y's. That's super easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's show how it works with a example, with an example, let's go. So we're gonna find the coordinates of min, uh, coordinates, coordinates, struggling. Coordinates of M, the midpoint of segment ST. Let me change that back to white. So it matches more or less segment ST for point S negative six three and T one zero. So all we have to do is plug this into our formula. Now what was our formula? It was X one plus X two over two for the X part. For the Y part, it's Y one plus Y two over two. Two. So there's our formula. Let's plug it in and see what happens. So we've got point, we'll call this point one and this point two. It doesn't really matter as long as we stay consistent. So x1 in this case would be negative six and x2 would be one. And then we're going to divide that by two. And then for this next one, y1 would be 3. And then we're going to add that to y2, which is 0. We love zeros and problems like this because it makes our life easier. There it is. Let's plug and chug. So we're going to take and we're going to combine those top bits. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5 over 2 is... <gasps> halves you could you could rewrite that we'll look at that here in a second this would be three plus zero which is three over two three halves so this in a lot of circumstances would be a perfectly acceptable answer you could also get either a decimal equivalent or a fraction equivalent if we got the a excuse me the mixed number equivalent so in this case if we did that it would be negative two and a half I don't know why I wrote that weird, but there it is. <laughs> and one and a half for the Y part. So either one of those is probably quite an acceptable answer. I told you it was easy peasy. I wasn't lying. Let's look at another example. We're going to do three total examples. One of them is going to be a lot like a problem that I told you about in the last video. Okay, so this one is a little bit different. So we're going to find the coordinates of J if K is the midpoint of J and L. So let me add in segment JL, right? And has 
and L has a coordinates of three, negative five. So this is a little bit different. Let's, let's kind of unpack this one because this one's a little bit brain bending. We're actually going to draw a picture of this one because it's going to help us. So we're going to find the coordinates of J if K is the midpoint of JL. So we have segment <coughs> JL and K is the midpoint. I'm, I'm not really drawing this one right and the scale and all those kind of things. You could draw this on a coordinate grid. So this point right here, it tells us is negative one, two. And this is the midpoint, right? We'll label that it mid so it's a little bit clearer. Midpoint M is kind of what I was, was headed for. And L has the coordinates three, negative five. Right? And we're looking for J. So this is setting up a little bit different. So just like often, like I said in the last video, we're often going to look at the geometry and understand the geometry and use that to set up an algebraic equation to solve for whatever we're missing. Same plan here, right? So in this case, the midpoint formula is M equals X1 plus X2 over 2 and Y1 plus Y2 over 2, right? Right? So that's the formula. But this time we're given M. So we're going to set it up the same sort of way, right? So we're going to say that negative one, two equals, let's see if we can walk through what's going on. We're going to call this J, we're going to label this as X1, Y1, which makes these X2, Y2, right? So when we plug it into our big formula, X1 is just X1, that's our unknown, right? Plus X2, which is three over two. Okay, so there's the first bit. And here, my, my commas keep looking strange. X2 is, or, or excuse me, Y1 is just Y1 because we don't know it, right? Plus Y2 is negative five. Put that over two. So now we've got a couple of unknowns, so we need two different equations to solve for two unknowns. And so it's going to be easier than we think because this whole mess in here, we'll label this one as, a green, as green, this has got to equal that, right? So we can set that equation up. So x1 plus 3 over 2 equals negative one. Let's label this as, what colors we got? Let's put a yellow, let's use yellow. Okay, so this guy over here has got to equal that guy. So we can set up that equation, which is also gonna be pretty easy peasy, right? So we've got y1 minus, I'm gonna go ahead and change this from plus a negative to minus, because why not? It makes less writing, but then I talked about it, so it took more time, so I don't know. That's gotta equal two. So now we've got two little baby equations. We can solve those. <coughs> they each have one variable, so those are, are doable all, all on their own. The first thing we're going to want to get rid of on both of them is that 2. So it's divided into everything else, so we're going to multiply by 2 on both sides. Times 2 times 2. I'm going to go ahead and since I've got my color change, I'm going to write it on this one too. So these cancel. Over on the green one, we'll bring down x1 plus 3 equals negative 1 times 2 is, of course, negative 2. And then over on the yellow one, we're going to bring down y1 minus 5 equals 2 times 2. Everybody's favorite problem, that's number 4. And then over here, we're going to subtract this 3. And then over here, we're going to add five. These cancel, leaving us with, are we still on? Yeah, we're still clearly on the screen. X equals negative, or X1 equals negative five. And Y1 
equals positive 9. So our final answer then is, what is this? This is J is 5, 9. Easy peasy. Let's do one more problem and then we're going to be done with this particular lesson. So here we go. Take that away. Bring, oop, what have I done? I don't know what I did. You, oh, look, there it goes. All right, bring this in. So this one is a lot like that problem type in the last one where, where, where we've got some geometry, we've got to puzzle it out. And then we got to do a little bit of algebra to clean it up at the end. So we're going to find the measure of segment PQ. If Q is the midpoint of PR. So here we're dealing with kind of another uh, postulate or theorem or something like that. This one is the midpoint theorem, I think. I don't know. I have to remember what the name is. But what it says is it's got to be a, it's got to be a postulate. It's kind of a no doubt. Because if this, if Q is the midpoint, then PQ and QR are congruent, which means their measures are equal, which means we can take this and set it equal to that, solve for y, and be done with that part. So let's do it. So here we go. We're going to say that 9y minus 2 equals 14 plus 5y. As we get later and later into this course, you'll find there's a lot of problems where we just set two things equal or we add them up and equal them to 90 or add them up and equal 180. There's going to be so many themes over the course of geometry where we end up doing a lot of the same thing repeatedly. So we're going to add two to both sides. And because it's the same type of thing and y'all are bright-eyed, bushy-tailed geometry students now, we're going to sneak in a second thing at once because we can. And we can because we're keeping it all neat and we're using our different colors and all of those awesome things. Oops, except I forgot to write two on there. I was too busy talking to you instead of focusing on the problem. And it's okay. So these two, the two and negative two cancel and the five Y and negative five Y cancel. So nine Y minus five Y is four Y equals 14 plus two is 16 so now we can take and divide that 4 off. So y equals 4. Now, we've got a problem here, and it doesn't say anything about y up here. So we're probably not done. Let's go back up and read what's happening. So find the measure PQ if Q is the measure of PR. So we want to find PQ, which would also be QR, right? So what we need to do in order to do that is we could actually technically plug it back into either one of those places. We're going to plug it in to this one, right? So 9 times 4 minus 2. 9 times 4 is 36. Bring down minus 2. 36 minus 2 is 34. That's it. We's done. There's no units, so... That's the, the end of end of that problem. If this was a word problem with all kinds of stuff, then would, there would probably be units, and that would be very important. If you're one of my students, I'll see you in class, first day of class. And if you're not one of my students, thanks for joining us. Anybody, make sure you like this video. Comment down below how we can help you out. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it does help us out, and it costs you nothing. See you later. Have a great day. Bye.